What's up guys, it's Andrew here from Simo Apps and today we are going to look at what the salary of a blockchain developer could be. Here comes the money! Here we go, money talk! Since it's quite a new and emerging area, it can be difficult to get information about it, but I've got some info and these salaries are going to be based on an average salary in the United States in an average city. So cities like San Francisco will obviously be much, much more higher, but they have such a greater cost of living that it kind of all balances out in a way. And remember, this is going to vary based on experience and company. So keep that in mind before we get into it. And a quick note that blockchain skills are massively, massively in demand at the moment. It's just a market that's coming out of nowhere in the past few years. So there's a crazy demand for skills, but not enough people in the marketplace. There are no real set standards in a blockchain industry. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Obviously, there's big ones like Ethereum and their language Solidarity, which is pretty common and I guess a standard for the industry. But there's kind of nothing set in stone like the web standards, iOS standards or Android standards or anything like that. So let's take a look at the salary for the different levels. <laughs> First of all, an intern. As an intern, I wouldn't really be looking into the salary at all. I would be looking into the other opportunities more so. Unless, of course, it's Facebook, Amazon or Google where they have absolutely massive salary packages for the interns. But they don't do too much in blockchain at the moment. So what I would focus on at the intern level instead is the following areas. Number one, can you learn from it? Number two, does it align to your skills and interests? Number three, there could even be potentially some sort of equity in it, especially in new blockchain startups based on ICOs. And number four, once you build up your skills, are there further opportunities there as a graduate or a full-time employee or that you could get elsewhere? once you have enough to put in your resume or LinkedIn. So focus on these areas instead as an intern, focus on more the skills, not the number. Of course, it's nice to have a salary. It's good to have something that you can live and eat, but don't focus on, oh, this company pays five grand more. I'm going to go there as an intern. That's not what you want to be focusing on at that level. As a junior, you could expect anywhere from the 75 to 95K mark. You may have experience in blockchain, you may not, but you definitely have experience in software development in other areas. You're probably looking about one to three years of experience for a junior, but this experience might not just be work. You could have a public GitHub page, you could have a showcase page or projects you've done at uni and so on. As a senior, you can probably expect anywhere from the 100k to the 120k mark. You would have experience in a blockchain development, probably around six months to a year at minimum. Whether that be actually working or you're involved and active in the open source community or you're working for a project, kind of donating your time to doing it out of your own interests and the like. You probably also have about three to five years in software development experience, ideally in languages like C++, C Sharp and Java. That's because a lot of the development is on these languages or they're based off these languages like with Ethereum and Solidarity. It's kind of like Java with a bit of JavaScript. But in saying that the projects that are coming out now have a support for a wide variety of languages like Python, JavaScript, and so on. They have a lot of libraries which you can kind of plug into and use. So that kind of skill set that they're looking for in a particular programming language is becoming more and more wider as the months go past. But wait a minute, Andrew. Don't some developers earn 150K? I have heard figures as high as 300K. What do you mean 120k? That's absolutely peanuts. Yes, that's a very good question, but this sort of salary does not take into consideration the cities that are crazy expensive to live in, like San Francisco, New York, and London. These figures are salaries for these sorts of areas, 
where you might get double or triple your salary, but you're also paying triple in rent, so just remember that. So keep that in mind, it's an average salary for your average city. If you're in a city that has a lot lower cost of living and you're earning six figures as a blockchain developer, that would be a pretty comfortable salary to live on and more than most people. Whereas San Francisco, if you're just earning over six figures, you could probably barely afford it. You're probably sharing a room with someone else. You're traveling several hours to get to work. So keep that in mind. As an architect, you'll be designing the system and making key decisions. And you can probably expect a salary from 130 to 160K. And not only would a good architect just have development skills, they would understand computer networking, they would understand security and so on. So they would kind of be a jack of all trades at some level and have deep expertise in blockchain development. These sorts of skills will be quite extreme. These sorts of skills would be extremely difficult to find on the market. And as such, you can command a premium like this and probably have your choice of role or company you want to work for if you're quite good in this area. Anything above this and you're going to be director, C-suite and so on. You'll be earning 200k plus and at this range you're going to be well renowned in the industry, providing thought leadership, you'll be speaking at conferences and so on. So you'll be extremely, extremely talented at this level. Here comes the money! Here we go, money talk. If you're a contractor, blockchain developer, you can earn probably... A... If you're a contractor, blockchain developer, you can earn anywhere from $50 an hour to $200 an hour. This could be online through freelancing websites, or this could actually be contracting out to a company to work for. So these rates are extremely, extremely high. However, you have to remember, contracting is an unstable job. You might go for a few weeks without work. Your contract might keep on getting extended every two weeks. So you don't know if you have to look for the next contract or if your company is going to extend you. So it's very unstable. And a quick note on salary, well-established firms that have been around a while are likely to pay more. However, if you go to a startup, you could get better opportunities if they take off be able to work remotely more so, and you can usually get some sort of equity in a company, especially at companies that raise their funding of ICOs. You might get some tokens or equity from that, but you know, who knows what's going to happen to a startup one or two years down the track, whereas a well-established firms have been around for a while. Anyhow, the key takeaway is that a blockchain developer is probably going to take home 10 to 20% more than a comparable software developer. It's massively in demand at the moment. It's just rising like crazy, whereas the education is on its way, but it's kind of still lagging behind because it's a new area. There's no real university courses or subjects so much on it, but you'll see in the years to come, more and more will come out. You especially see this in the online learning space and the self-development where you can kind of teach yourself and figure it out yourself. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.